Hey guys, Dantix here, back with some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. These aren't the kinds of videos I want to make, but we had some further updates to the December 10th delay, specifically from an investor's call that seems to quell a lot of worries a few of us have. So the joint CEO of CD Projekt Red came out to say that he wanted to briefly explain the reasons behind the decision. He says that he underestimated the time required for the final processes. He says the game is ready for the PC and runs great on the next gen consoles and could be shipped on the scheduled date for those platforms. However, even though the game has been certified on the current gens by both Sony and Microsoft, some very final optimization processes for such a massive and complex game require a bit of additional time. Moreover, while we are releasing on the PC and two console brands, we are in fact preparing and testing nine distinct versions of the game for the following platforms. PC, Xbox One, Xbox One S, PS4, PS4 Pro, compatible releases on Xbox Series S and Series X, PS5 compatible releases, and Stadia. <laughs> and last but not least, despite all the efforts taken to limit the impact of COVID-19 on our work, the current situation at its final stage of the project is not making things any easier. Now, we knew all this already. A few of you have not been happy with their decision here as maybe you're playing on PC and are constantly held back by the limitations of consoles and I understand that, but bear with it. It's made clearer by this statement in regards to the technical issues. We are releasing a game which is, to be honest, a next gen game and we're preparing it for fairly old machines which poses certain unique challenges that won't occur in future projects at least in the next one. Now when it comes to Stadia, it really doesn't affect the complexity of the issues. The things we are fixing in terms of performance are on a higher layer than Stadia. Stadia is kind of a PC build which, as Adam mentioned at the very beginning, is pretty much ready, so it doesn't really pile up. This is why we've been able to move it to coincide with the PC release, but the polish is needed to fix all that bugs and quality issues that we're still facing, and we see we can't fix them by the 19th, that's the only reason we're moving the date to December the 10th. So it seems the delay was partly to ensure the release came out simultaneously, but they had a few issues with the whole COVID situation, beyond the limitations of the current gen. The goal mostly to polish up the game and that decision wasn't taken lightly. He clarifies, we are fully aware of the consequences of this decision, but at the same time, we feel we have an amazing game on our hands and believe that the decision is a right one to take and will be borne out in the long run. When asked why December 10th is different when they were confident in a November 18th release, he says, we are in a very different situation now. As I said, we have the game already on PC and it plays great on both next gen consoles. We're finalizing the processes on the current gen. To be honest, releasing on the 19th was possible as well, but we believe that having these extra three weeks will enable us to get more things ready to our satisfaction. But we're talking only about technical things at the very final stage. Our confidence now is greater than before. We have the game and we can play it. I don't know how to best explain it, but the confidence is there. We're glad to have more time and believe this is the right move. I know three weeks doesn't seem like a long period, but it actually doubles our available time starting from the moment the decision was made. This can greatly help us with those technical matters regarding current gen. He then passes it over to his colleague who says, we've had people complete the game. For example, just yesterday night, we had people complete the game in Japan and then we heard from them and we keep hearing that it's unlike anything they have played before. And that comes from the mouths of people who are actually fans of video games. And I can assume we've seen quite a lot. So that gives us a lot of confidence in the quality of our content that we've prepared. It's of the highest standard and we're super happy with what we're about to deliver. Look, the game recently went gold and that suggests a finished product. Knowing that those testing the game, which aren't content creators mind you, but professionals who do this full time, haven't played anything like this is reassuring. But come on, we knew it would be a good game. People are just disappointed that it's being delayed again and they feel kind of lied to. More on that. 
We feel firm, as I said, the game is releasable on the 19th and having those three more weeks just gives us more chances to fix this and that, so we feel secure. Of course, the decision was not easy, but we also know that the release only happens once. The first impression is crucial, and in the long run, having a few things done which wouldn't have been done in time for the 19th will work in our favour. We feel, maybe not comfortable, but confident we are releasing on the 10th. Sometimes that's leadership, making a decision that they know will hurt them now, hurt them heavily, just to ensure a smooth release. We're quick to jump down the throats of companies who release broken games early, and quick to turn on CD Projekt Red for delaying, but we'll be quick to forgive when we get a game that's of the highest quality, that, that I'm sure of. In regards to the crunch, the CEO says it's not that bad and never was. Of course, it's a story that's been picked up by the media and some people have been crunching heavily, but a large part of the team is not crunching at all since they've finished their work. It's mostly about Q&A and engineers and programmers, but it's not that heavy, of course. It will be extended a bit, but we have feedback from the team. They're happy about the extra three weeks, so we don't see any threats regarding the crunch. Honestly, I kind of believe him. People like Jason Schreiner are quick to condemn CD Projekt Red, saying, imagine working so many hours that in June your studio head sent out an email apologizing to everyone's spouses and partners because it often means they cannot participate on the home front and then seeing quotes like this from an executive who owns 70 million in stock. All right, let me quickly unpack this. Jason is an old school journalist, a, a kind that puts in the research and puts out well-written pieces. The problem is he thrives on shock stories and I feel that's under the guise of a crusade for the people. Just like I have a bias towards the game, he has a bias against it. As an American, crunch means something different to him. Crunch in Poland means getting paid overtime to work one extra day a week on a game that's been in the making for eight years and is almost released. There'll be plenty of time to celebrate and take extended holidays with your family after. Though I don't know the full story and I hope nothing shady is happening. And if it is, I fully condemn it. Also, the 70 million in stock is highly misleading. The CEO is at the highest position in the company, so of course he would have a lot of stock. All members have stock in the company, so when it succeeds, they succeed. We've seen so many people attacking CD Projekt Red for crunching, but then attacking them for taking the extra time. I digress. The next part of the call covers what they plan to do with finances, stating they will need to rethink the marketing campaign and put income aside for next year's plans, which is obviously DLC and later down the track multiplayer. Nothing of note there except answering the questions of investors. However, they go on to say, when it comes to Metacritic, we continuously aim at a 90 plus game, so nothing has changed there. This remains the goal, and as Adam mentioned, this is actually the main reason for postponing the release. We want to give the game an extra polish. We'd rather be slightly ashamed right now in front of you than be ashamed in front of players once the game releases. So out of the box, this means that, well, out of the box, the game will be of a better quality than if it released on November the 18th. This makes sense, though I'm not sure just how much they could do in less than a month. I appreciate the goal though. Going for a 90 plus score means, like I mentioned before, taking flack now in order to please later. Some of you are worried that there are bugs in the game at all at this stage. CD Projekt Red addresses this with, Games of such complexity and magnitude always have some bugs upon release. This is understood, it's commonplace. Anybody who's played any game out there like GTA, Red Dead Redemption, The Witcher 3, any of the big games knows that there are bound to be some bugs. It's more about the scale and the quantity of these bugs and it's really the only issue we're facing. So of course, we're going to continue improving and working on the game once it launches, as was the case with Witcher 3, as everybody kind of knows, but when it comes to the launch moment, we want people to not be pestered by something that's going to be truly problematic for them. We want them to avoid those kinds of situations. We want them to enjoy their arrival in Night City. So coming back to your question, yes, it's basically optimization and all the challenges related to that. There's no other hidden story here. The game is ready, it's there. You can actually walk through the whole game and a number of people around the world who are given access to the game have done it. 
we need to be sure about the performance and that the glitches are gone. So that's everything of importance that was said during the investor call. The game is complete. They're just optimizing, squashing bugs and polishing. That is all. They're confident that this product is of the highest quality and want the release to really knock people's socks off. I'm not gonna be quiet about this. I fully believe it will be. Just wait and see. So thanks for watching guys, please be civil in the comments and if you want to support the channel be sure to like the video, subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Discord. I have a lot of videos planned so keep it locked. Ciao friends.